Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick video on voter information, particularly in California. Okay, so <clears throat> let me do some general voting uh, 2024 assistance first. Number one, you are not, it is actually against the law to take your camera and make and take a picture of your actual ballot. So like I just got my ballot, I'm gonna hold it on this way. I can take a picture of the outside. I can cover this up. I can take a picture of the outside here, but when I open it, I'm not supposed to take a picture of the actual ballot. If I go inside of the ballot booth, I'm technically not supposed to take a picture of the ballot booth, the stuff, the ballot that's in the ballot booth at all. Um, remember that you are not allowed to wear election vote per, for any particular candidate inside of the voting, uh, the voting area. So, you may have vote for Trump, vote for Harris, vote for even your local elections, vote for a judge, such and such, vote for um, Adam Schiff, what, whoever you're asking people to vote for, you technically are not allowed to do this in the voting center. You are not allowed to even hold any election, vote yes, vote no, vote anything, no election. Technically, it's called electioneering. You're not allowed to have a proponent of any electioneering inside of the voting center. In fact, you're not allowed to actually do it within 150 feet. And that's a federal. So you're not even allowed to, um, even if you as a group are all standing around, like, just standing, you're not standing in line, you're just standing, you're not holding a sign, you're not doing anything, you're just standing there, um, that can be a sign of voter intimidation. So there are some groups that I'm sure, and they this happened in 2020, where there are some groups that stood outside of the 150 feet and people, you know, with American flags, et cetera, and they were making people feel like they were voter intimidating. And technically it is voter intimidation, um, and, but outside of 150 feet, they're technically allowed to do that as long as you don't feel threatened. If you feel threatened, and that is a huge hurdle to climb over, just them standing there outside of 150 feet is, uh, is permissible. But if they are berating, if they're attacking, you know, of, of course attacking, but if they're berating, if they are being using threatening language, holding signs, that's fine. So you just have to be, I just want to put that aware. Do people get in trouble technically for taking pictures of their ballot and posting it? I mean, I've never heard of those kind of cases, but I'm not saying that it's not tech the laws on the books. Let's put it that way. Um, do you know are people petty enough to report you, and would the prosecutor be petty enough to to prosecute you for that? Probably not. But I just want to be mindful. But somebody can strike your picture or whatever down. Um, so I just want to be mindful of that. Fast forward, state of California. Oh, one more thing. Uh, state of California does something that a lot of other states doesn't, you know, they don't do. Uh, number one, California provides a sample ballot. They also actually have a book. And I don't have the information book with me. Um, I actually don't have that next to me. But, um, and I was really surprised when I lived in other states, that was one of the things that I was looking for. I was like, well, how do you know what to vote for, how to vote, whatever? And they're like, we have to look it up. 
and you probably have to go. So my best advice is that you probably have to go to your state's um, there's two places you could absolutely go. Your state secretary of state website. So New Jersey secretary of state, Texas secretary of state, they have to list all of the things that are going to be on the ballot. So there's that. Um, but <clears throat> your local elections, um, you would have to go to your county, um, registrar, like the, and recorder your registrar recorder, your county, not your city, your county. And your county will have all this local elections that are the local things that's going to be on your ballot. So go to your county registrar. Every single state that has a county in every county. I mean, some people have, they don't have counties, they have parishes. They have to have a registrar and that person is going to have that information. By the way, how do you know the results? You go to your county registrar and your county registrar is going to be able to tell you what is available, what is happening. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got a call. I have to call her later because I'm talking to you. So your county registrar is going to be the one who is going to give you the results. They will also give you the, the ballot. Now, if you want further information about, because the problem with this, I know in California particularly, but other states do, um, the, county, the county and the state does allow people who are running for office to make a statement and is on their official website. They will also allow them to explain what, what either, like if there's a measure or something on the ballot to explain the yes and the no. It's not a requirement. And so therefore, if you want further information, then I strongly encourage you to look at the Women's Voter Guide I can't talk right now. Okay. She's persistent. She's calling me again. Okay. Um, the voter, uh, the California voter, uh, uh, no, not California, the Women's Voters Guide. Women's Voter Guide, they have one in every single state. The League of Women Voter. They have one in every single state. So, and they tend to be, even though you may think that they lean to one side versus the other, they are absolutely nonpartisan and they will provide information on both sides of the of the issue. And they host events throughout every state. So you do want to you know, contact them. Anyway, so <clears throat> now focus on the state of California. Now, I would like to tell you, State of California, also Cal Matters is a really good one, if, if for those of you who are in California. But California gives, uh, when they give the sample ballot like this, they also give you direction how to vote. And they um, are also, now you can take your voter, you can take your sample ballot into the voting booth with you so you can mark this up. Now, my mother and my uncle, he was alive, would sit here and go through all of these together, just like I am about to do this with you. Um, I am not going to get too heavy into this because I am going to have to look this up myself. There are some, I'm not getting into the state and um, senators because that's going to be according to That is going to be according to your preference. And you need to figure that out on what would be your preference as a whole. So I'm not gonna get into that. But what I will get into is, um, and for me, what I have on my ballot is I have some city measures that's looking up some like special measures and repairs. And it looks like both of these are looking at taxes. So 
So, um, so like for example here, um, if you live in Paramount, um, well, who okay. cares? I'm not going to go there. Um, they even have now on the ballot something with Compton Community College District that's having something too. And on here, they also um, sample ballot California. They do actually tell you who's in support and who's not in support. So you can also vote for your, it looks like the water district is also, um, is also available as well. We have some judges that's on the ballot. I actually do have a very close friend of mine, George Turner, who's running. He is a public defender. And he's running against Steve um, Napolitano, Napolitano, and he's a council member from Manhattan Beach. Um, George Turner is a public defender from the county of Los Angeles. I have known him forever, and he is a great man on so many levels. Um, um, he works really hard. He ran for El Camino's district as well. Um, and so that was really, he did not win that. Um, the person he ran against actually happened to unfortunately pass away. Uh, but I know you're not here to watch me vote, uh, but you are here to, um, I don't know how to vote. On, I, mean, I don't want to focus on these small little measures because you may not be in my area. Um, but I will say a word to these, and he's, oh, FYI, he's running for Judge uh, Superior Court, office number 39. I'm going to pause and say this real quick. One of the major problems that I do have with... Um, the judges is that a lot of times oh by the way one more thing to say you need a black or blue pin and you can't put an x on the circle you have to bubble it in completely this is no pencil it is black or blue no sharpie black or blue pin only yeah okay. that's that Um, okay. So one of the thing about the judges that I really struggle with is that if you happen to Google the judges, a lot of times you're going to struggle with getting information because they don't really, they don't really do a lot of, um, advertisement. So, um, and they don't do TV time. I mean, part of this is because of money. So I get all that. Um, I do, I mean, George is doing a lot of campaigning. A lot of it is online. So that's that's more than what I say for some of these people. Some A lot of times you can look them up and you see nothing. There's no website. There's no nothing. Um, but there is a unique aspect of this. <clears throat> Judge of the Superior Court Office number 39. That's George. He's running George Turner. And then we have... Judge of Superior Court, office number 48, um, Erica Wiley. She's a public defender. She's running against Renee Rose. And then she's a district attorney. And then you have Judge of Superior Court, Lachey Henderson. She's a, another public defender. And she's running against Sharon Ransom, who's another deputy district attorney um you don't really have a lot of judges who are dish who are um public defenders so you may want to consider uh running for um you may want to consider voting for somebody who may be a public defender if you feel like if you feel so I don't have a, a, you know, of course I want to see my friend one, but I think you should do what is, is of your pressure. Now let's move towards, um, 
But see, here we go. You have your judge number 135 and uh, one, 135 are two district attorneys running against each other. And the other one is um, a law professor on 137 and running against another district county council. Um, again, and unfortunately, here's the thing. A lot of times with judges, you're going to depend on, you can look them up and I don't, I'm not endorsing or anything, anybody on any of this. Um, but a lot of times you end up looking at what exactly their position is. And I think that's unfortunate because a lot of times they, they're not winning. Okay. So let's look at, I'm a push the county stuff aside and look at the state. So state measure number two, I'm gonna read it for you. It authorizes bonds for public school and community college facilities. It authorizes 10 billion in general obligation bonds for repair, upgrade and construction of facilities at K through 12 schools, including charter schools, community colleges, and career technical education programs, including for improvement of health safety codes and classroom upgrades, requires annual audits. Okay, fiscal impact. Increases state costs to about 500 million annually for 35 years to repay the bond. Wow. 500 million. 35 years, I'm gonna be dead. Will I be dead? No, I won't be dead. No? Well, it'll be my, I'll be um, definitely retired. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, anyway, the supporters of CTA, California Teachers Association, California Nurses, California School Nurses Organization, Community College, League of California. This is a, this is a, okay. Opponents are Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. I can understand. You completely bottled me. For a very long time. So whatever you decide. Okay. Let's look on your number two. What a bond is, it's like a loan. Think of this as a credit card. So you're putting $10 million on your credit card and it's going to take you 35 years to pay this off. And every year, you're going to be paying $500 million. Okay. For 35 years. Did I mention that? Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's let's read, read this again. Constitutional right to marriage. Amends the California Constitution to recognize fundamental right to marry, regardless of sex or race, removes language in California Constitution saying that marriage is only between a man and a woman. Fiscal impact, there will be none. Supporters is... Sierra Pacific, I think that's in the Synod of the Evangel Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Dolores Ferta Foundation, if you're not familiar with her, she is a, uh, she is a huge activist and she used to do a lot of her activism. Um, she did a lot of work with Cesar Chavez and Equality California. The opponent is Jonathan Keller. I don't know who that is, sorry. California Family Council and Reverend Tainer DeBella. I don't know who that is. I don't know why they're so important. Anyway, that's my point. But if you are for keep and and I'm not sure why this is on the ballot. Let me explain what this means. It means that somewhere in the Constitution, California's Constitution, it still states that marriage is between a man and a woman, and this is to reinstitute, re restate, 
the fact that currently um, marriage is legal between a man and a man and a woman and a woman as well. And so it's to remove the language of man and woman with gay marriage. If this does not pass, it literally still does not make gay marriage illegal. It still makes gay marriage illegal. It's just not in the constitution. Okay. <clears throat> so, so it really does know it. There is zero impact on if this passes or not. This is really just a, a formality. And the only reason is because the federal government has a marriage legal between a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Number four, authorizes measure four, authorizes bonds for safe drinking water, wild fire prevention, and protecting communities and natural lands from climate risk legislation stature. Hmm. Authorizes 10 billion again in general obligation bonds for water, wildlife prevention and protection for communities and lands requires annual audits. Okay. Increases state costs for about 400 million annually for 40 years to repay the bonds. So we are paying, so, you know, if you voted yes to measure two, you increase the budget by 500, well, you increase the fact that we have to pay somebody back $500 million for 35 years. I want you to know though, eventually if, especially in the midst of our current economic status, we're not running out of deficit. So I don't think, you know, it's too bad in California, but I will say that in economic lean times, this means that we're gonna have to have a tax increase somewhere. especially if you're going to have to increase the budget, increase our financial obligations to 500 million on measure two, and then we're going to come around on measure four and increase it by another $400 million annually for 40 years to repay this bond. Bond, remember, our loans. Um, but on the other hand, let's think about who's, um, I'm going to put some information out there. We have about 3% of California that does not have access to clean water. So we're looking at about 9 million people who do not have access to clean water. Um, we also have a lot of cities that need repair when it comes to clean water. Um, I know that every year when we look at, look at what's happening with the LA River, um, LA River also has a great deal of pollution, especially at times where there's not a lot of water coming in. Um, so think about Cal Fire firefighters. They're the ones that deal with if we don't clean up the, you know, when it comes to wildfire prevention, cutting down the forest a bit, then the wildfire season wasn't that bad this year. But it can get worse if we don't. The federal government put money towards it because of what happened during the Trump years when we had the really bad wildfire. Um, so they kind of forced their hand on that. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna move faster. I'm giving myself 10 minutes. Okay, measure five allows, oh my God, allows local bonds for affordable housing and public infrastructure with 55% voter approval. This is an amendment. Amendment means that you're gonna need two thirds. So you're gonna need more than a simple majority. Those other ones need a simple majority, two, three, and four. Five, you need, you need more than a simple majority. This is allows approval of local infrastructure and housing bonds for low and middle income Californians. Okay, 
with uh, 55. Okay, now let's look at this. The fiscal impact increased local borrowing to fund affordable housing, supportive housing, and public infrastructure. The amount would depend on decisions by local government and voters. Borrowing will be repaid with higher property taxes. Ooh. Y'all. I was with them up until that last little three words. Borrowing would be repaid with higher property taxes. Yo. Oh, I just said that when you get a bond, you're going to have to pay back taxes. You're going to have to increase tax. Are you willing to increase higher property taxes? I think the question is about how much are you willing to increase? And the fact that they're not saying, I think that's a problem. Okay, so look at who's in support. California Professional Firefighters, League of Women Voters of California, Habitat for Humanity, California. That's interesting. Opponents, California Taxpayers Association, California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce, Women's Veterans Alliance. I don't know, y'all. Do you want, I mean, if you don't own a home right now, then this doesn't bother you. But if you do own a home, this is going to hurt you. Your mortgage is going to go up. Okay. <laughs> Number six, eliminates constitutional provision allowing involuntary servitude for incarcerated persons. Okay, it's an amendment. So that means that you're going to need more than a simple majority with this as well. Technically, it's supposed to be 66 I don't know why they said 55% with the last one, um, but okay. This amends the California Constitution to remove current provision that allows jails and prisons to impose involuntary servitude to punish crime, forcing incarcerated persons to work. Okay, so the, it's, the fiscal impact is potential increase or de decrease in state local costs depending on how work for people in state prisons and county jail changes um <clears throat> i'm a, i'm for incarcerated people being able to work but i'm also for them not working for like a dollar a day so i think that and and a lot of times prisoners are working in prisons that are in private prisons. So I'm actually thinking, okay, so this doesn't eliminate work. It eliminates involuntary servitude, meaning that they're forced to work. And when I mean forced work is not like cleaning up like if they're working in the food hall, this is like Victoria's Secret forcing you to sew some underwear. Which is happening. You know, that kind of a thing. So do we want to force people? And, it, you know, for those of you who want more information on this topic, I highly encourage you to watch the 13th on, you do not have to have a Netflix account. You can go to your YouTube and Netflix on YouTube and watch it there. Okay, number 32, raises minimum wage. Okay, raises minimum wage to for employees with 26 or more employees to $17 immediately, $18 on January 18th. For employers with 25 or fewer employees, $17 on January 1st, 2025. $18 on January 1st, 2026. Of course, the people, there's no supporters. Everyone who's against it is the California Groceries Association, the California Restaurant Association, 
and the California Chamber of Commerce, do you want the minimum wage to increase? Now, the interesting thing about this is that minimum wage has already increased, but um, people, and we've seen the effects of minimum wage increasing, let's put it that way. But most companies have already increased their employee salary to $17 an hour. So I don't know. Okay. So, that, I mean, that's a conversation you may want to have. Like, I'm not sure. Okay, number 33. Expands local government's authority to enact rent control on residential property. It repeals the Costa Hawkins Rental Agreement of 1995, which currently prohibits local ordinances limiting initial residents and rental rates for new tenants or rent increases for existing tenants. The fiscal impact is reduction in local property taxes revenue at least tens of millions of dollars annually due to likely expansion of rent and control communities. So they're saying that if we have more rental control, then the property taxes are going to be depressed. What they're really trying to say is like rent control kind of make creates, i.e. more rundown properties. That's not true. That's not true. The supporters are retire California Alliance for Retired Americans, mental health advocacy, uh, tenants together. I've stayed in rent control places um, before. My first apartment was rent control. I didn't know it. It was an amazing, cute little apartment. Should have stayed there for a little longer, actually. Um. The opponents is California Council for Affordable Housing. I'm curious as to why they would oppose it. And Women's Veterans Alliance. Um, interesting that they also oppose Measure 5. So the same people that oppose Measure 5 oppose Measure 33 in not making... Yeah, but both of these are trying to do something to make affordable housing. If you had to choose one, at least 33 is going to at least make current places decrease their price. Whereas measure five is building new places, is making cities and counties put proposals to build lower income housing and affordable housing. And I don't know. I don't know. You have to think about how that, and then that they're going to charge you. And the problem with increasing your property taxes is who knows when it'll ever go down. Probably won't. Okay, number 34, restricts spending of prescription drug revenues by certain healthcare providers initiative statute. Requires certain providers to spend 98% of their revenues from a federal discount prescription drug program on direct patient care. Authorized statewide negotiation for medical drugs, medical drug prices. The fiscal impact is going to increase state costs likely in the millions of dollars to enforce new rules on certain healthcare entities. Hmm. Who's for this? The who's for is the Latino Heritage Los Angeles ALS Association. I think I'm more concerned about who's against it. National Orgs for Women, Consumer Watchdog, Coalition for Economic Survival, AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And Dolores Herta. Oh, wow. Um, what does this do? Let's see. What does this actually do? It would require to spend 98% of revenues from federal discount on direct patient care. How do you do that? They only keep 2% of the revenues? That seems kind of weird. 
it seems like it would end up increasing the cost. And then they would say that you would then have to, in order, they, they're they saying it's going to cost more money because we'd have to figure out who's going to enforce the rules. Well, the people who, you would need auditors, so you'd have to hire some more people to try to figure out if they're doing it correctly. Interesting. Um. Oh, we only have two more, two more. Oh my gosh, this is taking long. I'm so sorry. Two more, y'all. Okay, number 35, provides permanent funding for Medi-Cal healthcare services initiative statute, makes permanent the existing tax on managing health care insurance plans, if approved by the federal government, provides revenues to pay Medi-Cal health care services. Okay, so it's going to cost a billion dollars and two billion annually to increase funding for certain health care programs. The total funding increase is going to be between two to five billion dollars, and we don't know how long it's going to take. The people who are for this is Planned Parenthood, um, America, American Academy of Pediatrics. Okay. So it appears that we're expanding healthcare for So we already are giving money towards Medi-Cal healthcare for services, which is children. And it seems like we're just keeping, we're just keeping what we're doing going. So there's that. Allowing more more children to have access to Medicare, medical improvements. Okay. And then number 36 allows felony charges and increase sentences for certain drug and theft crimes. Allows felony charges for possessing drugs and or thefts under $950. If the defendant has two prior drug or theft convictions. Oh. Wow. Interesting. Okay, so this means that we would have way more people in put in jail. But why would we make that to a felony charge? This sounds like more like a three strikes rule. Instead of three strikes, which is now illegal, you put them in jail forever. Instead, it looks like we're going to give them a felony charge and thefts for under $900, $950. You know your phone? If somebody stole your phone and they had two drug or theft convictions. If somebody stole my phone, actually, if somebody stole my physical purse, because my purse cost 500, so then my wallet, so you, you pay for my purse and my wallet, we're, we're at 950. I love my purse. If you stole my purse, I'd be sad. I don't know if I want them to go to to get a felony for stealing my purse. I mean, the stuff inside for sure. Like, I mean, you know, like my credit cards and stuff, I get that. If you steal my phone, my phone will get you a felony. I still think of the 18-year-old kid who who may have stolen something. You know, they, you know, selling a phone. Because I had a kid who stole my phone at Compton College. Like, um, I mean, I don't know if I agree with this, but you should make a decision based on you. I don't know if felony charges, the, the problem with the felony is that it, as you know, it's just really hard to get a job. Okay. So, Final last two points. We are having the national presidential and vice presidential election. It appears, oh y'all. Um it appears we have uh one, two, three, four, five, six, six people on. Jill Stein made it to the um made it to the ballot. 
Robert Kennedy made it to the ballot. Uh, Kamala Harris is number two. And then Donald Trump is last on the ballot. Um, so you need to pick whichever one you want there. Then you have, and you can also do a writing candidate. Um, and then finally, your U.S. Senate. So we have two options here. You have your U.S. Senate full term, um, which is they'll get a full term. And then you have your short term that is actually going to expire because, because of this, we have our current person, uh, Senator Butler. She's there at the moment. And she's going to leave the day of the elect, you know, the day of the election or right after. And so we're going to sit someone in her spot from the day of the election until January 3rd, when the new Senate gets sworn in. And so that so that means that you need to vote for whoever that person would be. And then you would need to turn around and vote again for who will get the full, full six year term. And that is your California ballot. I hope that you find this to be helpful. I hope that you use your sticker, um, your I vote sticker, and have a great rest of your afternoon.